What's up everyone? Today is another sunny and 70 day in upstate New York and we're gonna go ahead and pull the transmission out. Now it's not really gonna be very difficult seeing how the engine is already, you know, gone. <laughs> we just have to go ahead and detach it from the cross member and uh, then we can get a better look at the overall how things go together on this car. This is my first first car with a torsion bar uh, suspension setup. Very interesting, very interesting. And uh, I guess there's nothing more to do than just to dig into this. So uh, yeah, first we're gonna get it off the ground a little bit more so that I can scoop myself underneath it. And uh, we gotta get this, uh, this uh, imaginary snow off here, you know, this is a case you forgot you're in the northeast. Wow, that adds about a crap ton of weight to it. And that's, that's like an avalanche there. That's the sucker that we're trying to get out today, obviously. Um, like I said, pretty straightforward. We're just going to scoot it out. I figure if we uh, go ahead and put a piece of, you know, I don't know, <sighs> cardboard or something underneath it, we could probably just scoot it without scratching the hell out of it. It's optimistic, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's go ahead, dig into this, get this sucker out. As you can see, I have this lifted a little bit different, so now I have a very awesome access point for the rear end of this transmission. It definitely was messed with. There's a bolts missing out of the cross member for the actual transmission, which I have to bring up now. Coming from a background of like the Mark III Super specifically, this is a totally alien environment for me. And I really love experimenting with vehicles and learning new things, and this is just a very interesting setup. And uh, you guys are 100% correct, that is just the transmission mount that goes across, not the whole torsion bar cross member. The torsion bar cross member does go above the transmission in the bell, or in the transmission tube. Uh, however, I really hope that the, uh, the contour, the, uh, the geometry of this cross member and the other one, even though they're totally different, won't you know, impede using it. Because at this point, I probably will just use the one I have. But we got to get this transmission out, and uh, I just wanted to update you guys that you know, I was wrong. And I learned something, and that's as, as long as you learn something at the end of the day, it's fine to be wrong. Anyways, what else? Um, oh, while I have this up and everything, I'm probably going to pull these exhaust pipes out. Pull the whole thing right out of here. Because I'll have a nice access point for that. But, all right, less talking, more doing. All right, now that we have the uh, whole cross member dismantled, we just have to pull the transmission out. There's a few things like fittings that we have to disconnect, the uh, you know, the shifting linkage and stuff. Not a big deal. Fortunately, dropping it down gives us a very easy access to it. There is something very concerning about this transmission that I just now noticed today, and it's the bottom left-hand corner of the bell housing. I don't know what the heck happened there. I know we're gonna take a look at it when we get it out, but that is a huge chunk of what looks like just rotted away aluminum, which is different, that's for sure. Um, yeah, we're probably gonna be looking for a transmission, which not that that spot is really bad. We're gonna have to really investigate it though. Anyways, Murphy's Law. <laughs> Fortunately, you know, we can we can get like a 99A like John was talking about if this transmission is a no-go, which really sucks because when I first, you know, was investigating it, I pulled out the, the dipstick for the transmission and the transmission fluid didn't smell burnt or anything. So I was really thinking we were going to be set with this transmission. I wasn't expecting that we would have rotted out aluminum, which 
We're gonna blame it on those silverfish. Apparently silverfish now eat aluminum. Mutant silverfish. The more you know. So, okay, let's get those linkages disconnected. Suck that thing right out of there and pop it on the ground and see what kind of shenanigans we have on our hands. All right, guys, it is out, <laughs> and let me tell you, it put up a little bit of fight, but not too much. I did use the uh, engine hoist, I put it underneath there, and I, I used uh, just the straps like this, or the chain like this, and just lifted it right up and out. And I put another loop right on the back side, just so I can kind of control the output shaft, and then swing it around, and then just pull the, uh, the, the engine hoist out. And honestly, because it wasn't too heavy, the ground wasn't a big issue. The ground is still not too wet because the snow is just now melting but it is it is a little damp now i still get a kick out of where this rot is on the the belt housing which makes it look like it was chewed up by a rat <laughs> it's very strange i don't see any reason why this won't work for us it's not a structural issue as far as i can tell the only two parts down there is just for the dust guard or dust shield and that's that's it so let's get this inside we'll tear this down and see what we're working with because if we can reuse this 904 transmission then then honestly we're going to save a lot of money it takes a lot less torque to turn this thing which means more horsepower in the long run to the wheels so I'm very 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 happy with uh how i didn't damage anything today and man it would be nice to have a nice poured concrete and uh, a garage over us but you know we all have our dreams. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and get this thing inside. We are back in the garage and it's not that heavy, but boy, it's awkward to carry <laughs> for sure. I thought I had four of the bolts and I was planning on just throwing it right on the stand, but I don't have them. So as it stands right now, I am going to have to run to Ace or someone and get two more of those bolts so I can mount it on a stand and we can get to work on the transmission. I really like working on things on stands if I can help it. So let's go ahead and uh, for now we'll leave it on the, the super high-end transmission mat. Uh, if you ever find one of these, it's, you know, snag it and hold on to it. Um, other than that, I have a disaster of a garage. Um, ever since picking up the car, I've been like, you know, blinders on you know, getting the engine pulled apart and cleaned best I could in the two weeks and bring it down to Tony's. And uh, I really let the garage, you know, get out of control. So in the next few days, I really need to, you know, clean and organize things and it'll make my life a lot easier. And uh, yeah, oh, guys, and I always love just looking at this monstrosity. I don't know if you guys are new to the channel, but this is the main build, but it's a, it's a very long-term project. It's what a beautiful, beautiful engine. And this is only the uh, the mock-up engine. The real engine is sitting right there. That's still got to go down to a machine shop. That's actually the biggest holdup right now. Um, I want to get this engine done. And I have to get a couple other parts and pieces for this whole thing sorted out. Namely, a new rear end because this is not going to work. So we're going to go to a Ford 9-inch on this. And uh, yeah, but look at that, guys. An LS 6.0 LS twin turbo. And you can't, you can't argue with just how beautiful this Edelbrock intake manifold is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyways, back to this build. So, yeah, I, need a, I really need to sit down and spend a few days cleaning this garage because it's a total disaster. And uh, now that we're back up from Tony's, I know stuff like this. This oil pan, I can put that in storage. I can throw away those valve covers because they're junk. And, uh, yeah, we can dig into this in the next few days.
until the next time guys i really hope you enjoyed the content i always try to uh you know rising tides lift all boats and it's like a whirlwind that i'm going through it's it's seems like it's just blowing up and uh so I, I really want you guys to go and take a few seconds and check out two channels. I'm going to try doing one or two channels every weekend so that every other, because there's plenty of content. This isn't a competition. This is all about, you know, bringing each other up. So if you have a channel and you want to take a look at, or you want people to take a look at it, email me and, uh, you know, I'll take, I'll, I'll personally take a look at your channel and, you know, I'll, I'll definitely recommend. So there's two this weekend. Actually, let's do three because I haven't done one in a while. There's three channels I want you all to look into. Um, Grease Rookie, I really like his content. I really hope that you guys can go over there, subscribe, start bringing his channel up because he he really has a lot of potential. And uh, Shop 209, he's working on some really great projects over there. And also one of our moderators, he's uh, he's working on his own projects and I really recommend you go take a look at it. And that is 19... 86 c30 um or chevy c30 awesome awesome guy and uh you know let's go take a look at these guys rise their numbers up or raise rise raise their numbers up and uh until the next time keep it shiny side up and god bless